Hi lovers, now you've heard this a thousand times and perhaps you're even guilty of saying this your damn self. Nice girls finish last. Nice guys finish last. So today I wanna to change the script once and for all. In my opinion, it isn't that nice people finish last, it's that needy people finish last. And excessive niceness is actually a form of neediness. Needing people to like you, needing to get along with others, needing to avoid conflict at all costs, even though conflict is a natural and healthy part of life. Next week, I'm gonna take some friends to this really cool place, to a jazz club. Oh my God, I love jazz. so cool. Some nights they do salsa, like the... I love salsa as well too, and I love jazz. Are you into that, um, that genre of kingdoms and kings and knights and queens? Are you? Not first. Yeah, me neither. What are your like your biggest pet peeves? I'm someone who's like a little passive aggressive. I guess I don't like that. I agree. Yeah. Or uh, like you know um, dramatic. Yeah, I agree with that too. I, I don't like that. Uh, I like you know women who are kind and can be the not just closed off and miserable. I feel the exact same way. I actually think those are my top three as well too. Right. Yeah. Now, like many mammals, humans are designed to live in close-knit interpersonal communities. And these communities are built on many things like trust, reliability, and dependency. So let's begin with trust. Now, Washington State University did this study that found that people who acted excessively selfishly and those who act excessively generously were kind of viewed the same way. An experiment was carried out where a game was played. In this game, people sought individual rewards and group rewards. The ones who went solely for individual rewards were seen as very selfish and people mistrusted them. By the same token, the people who went truly for the group rewards, they were also mistrusted because no one believed they could be that altruistic and it seemed like they were trying to prove a point that they were better than everyone else. Next, let's discuss dependency. In a healthy cooperation-based society, everybody has and knows what their role is. We are attracted to those who need us because we probably need them in return. Reciprocity is a beautiful thing, but when somebody needs a lot from us, it makes us a little weary. Are they gonna need more from me than I can give? When will their needing end? Whoa, 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 buddy, back up. I'm just barely getting through things myself here. <laughs> In a competition-based existence, this kind of person can come across as a dependent, not as an asset, an ally, or as an equal. Now, of course, not all nice people are needy, but if your niceness creeps into the realm of neediness, this can be an issue, and there actually is a psychological term for that. So today we want to talk about that dependent personality disorder, a psychiatric condition where an individual is over-reliant on somebody else to provide them with their emotional and physical needs. And this leads to a submissive and clinging behavior and also that fear of separation. Finally, let's move into reliability. If someone is constantly bending, compromising, accommodating, and complimenting us, we learn pretty quickly that we can't rely on them for leadership and possibly even honesty. Yes, people do love compliments, and having an agreeable personality is the number one trait for determining the success of a long-term relationship. But these two things in excess are not a good thing. For example, compliments are only useful when they're directed in an area that we are actually proud of because Arbitrary compliments show to us that someone is not listening, paying attention, and actually understanding us. And second to that, agreeableness is great, but we can't forget one important thing. The reason why we live in the world that we live in and a new iPhone comes out every second or third week and we're constantly developing is because of the fact that somebody is willing to say, that's not good enough. We challenge ourselves, we grow the best, and we put ourselves in adverse conditions. And the same goes when it comes to relationships. So. Great things happen when great minds don't think alike. Except You're a coffee like, person. Yeah, a big time. I hate time. coffee. Really? I'm a tea person, that's why. So we're kind of like cats and dogs, right? Tomato, tomato, right? No, cats and dogs. Can we say I like to like incorporate a, some level of psychology behind everything I would say and do ideally? I think psychology is so bad. It bad? Yeah, it treats people like cattle. So this is what this is what someone told me in LA as an Italian man was like, yeah, in Toronto there's a lot of Italians, a lot of Italian restaurants. No. No? It's a lie. It's very, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know who, who said that. I don't think it's really true. Okay. Lady Gaga. Do you like her? Uh, yeah, I mean, she did a great job at the, uh, the halftime show. I don't like her at all. Uh, no? No. As you guys can see, I didn't just research this topic. I went out and tested it in person. Now studies show that if you go on a date with somebody and you agree the entire time, they're going to feel a repulsion towards you. On the flip side, if you go on a date with somebody 
somebody and you disagree the whole time, they're gonna be like, I cannot stand this person for one more minute. But here is the interesting thing. If you disagree with everything someone says for the first half of the date and then agree with all they say for the second half of the date, that person's gonna feel very strong and warm towards you and feel like they've won you over. I agree, yeah. There's something that I want to note here. Even though this experiment in particular went ridiculously well, my advice to you guys out there is not to go out there and do this arbitrary half and half thing, but it is definitely something to keep in mind, especially for people who exist on either end of the extreme spectrum. Way too disagreeable, which don't nobody like, and way too agreeable. And I know sometimes that can seem frustrating because we are told all our lives to be nice, to be kind, to be loving. And then it seems like as you get into adulthood, people turn around and turn that into a negative thing. There's another four letter acronym as opposed to that four letter word that I go by when it comes to good, effective and kind communication. I go by HAIL, which is communication that is honest, that is authentic, that has integrity and that is done with love. Now, if you do hail, you don't have to be nice. Sometimes being kind or being cruel is actually the kindness, standing up to somebody. And I watched this really dope TED talk while I was prepping for this video this morning and it was from a guy who was like, yo, I am the stereotypical nice guy. And when I was very honest with myself, my niceness came from a fear of confrontation and a fear that people won't like me. And as a result of that, I found myself saying, staying silent or nodding along to behavior from people that I didn't agree with. You know, he sat by while his grandparents made some racist comments, heard some homophobic things and didn't stand up for people. Your integrity is extremely, extremely important. And if niceness rests underneath all those things, bonus, because that means when you do say something negative, at the heart of it all, good intentions come behind it. And that is my final word for you guys. If you wanna watch how that date went down, it was incredible. Actually, it's one of my favorite episodes. You guys have to go to full screen to watch. Please go to full screen to watch. It's a way of supporting me and showing love for my content. I did an original series on there, which I could not have done on this YouTube channel because the production value and the casting was way beyond my capabilities. In essence, I tried out 10 different dating and psychological experiments to see if they would work because I don't want to give you guys advice that I haven't tested out there in the field. It is funny, it is educational, it is relatable, and it is available right now when you go to full.sc slash shambooty. If you are an AT&T customer, you are in luck. You get one year for free. So this favor is like free 99 for you. Everybody else, you also got a little bit of luck on your side as well too. You get a one week free trial, which means you can watch all of season one and over half of season two right now if you go and support. Much love to all of you guys. Be kind to each other, speak with hail and hail to you. Sitting on the balcony, probably sitting on top of me, rolling it properly, licking it constantly. What a monopoly, giving you honesty, giving me odyssey, giving you quality. Mama, be proud of me, I swear that.